Hey, it's Kurt at the Top Corner Hockey Studios, Top Corner Hockey on Facebook, Top Corner Kurt on Instagram. Thanks for watching. First and foremost, I want to say thanks to everyone who's been enjoying this series. I've had a lot of feedback and it makes me feel good to know that you're enjoying this series on defunct NHL teams. During this series, we examine all the teams that have failed over the course of the 99 year history of the NHL. Can you believe that 26 team names have not made it to today? There's a lot of teams that have fallen by the wayside. Today, we'll examine the New York Americans. After granting Boston the first U.S.-based team in NHL history, the NHL was eager for more and set their sights firmly on New York City. Notorious bootleg boss William Dwyer was tipped off by a Toronto journalist that the NHL wanted to expand and that Dwyer should acquire the rights to New York. Dwyer discovered the Hamilton Tigers were ripe for the picking because the Tigers players had been suspended for holding out for more dough. Hamilton was a first place club in 1925 and Dwyer saw this as a chance to cash in immediately. He bought the Hamilton Tigers for $75,000 and moved them to Broadway. With stars like Billy Birch, Red and Shorty Green, the New York Americans, or Amerks as they went by, were an instant hit. The fans loved the sport and loved the huge 18,000 seat Madison Square Garden. The Amerks missed the playoffs their first year, but the team was so successful off the ice, the owners of MSG decided a second New York team could work just as well as the Amerks. After only one season in New York, the Amerks had company. The New York Rangers started playing in 1926. Although Dwyer had a verbal guarantee that the Amerks would be the sole users of Madison Square Garden, MSG owned the Rangers and they obviously played there. While Dwyer fumed over that, he also saw his rental fees for the gardens go up every year too. But there was nothing Dwyer could do. He couldn't go to the authorities because he was being nailed in a rum running scheme. Like the Amerks, the Rangers were also a success. The biggest difference was the Amerks were missing the playoffs and the Rangers were Stanley Cup winners in just their third season. With that, the Rangers immediately became the darlings of the New York sports scene. And so it continued. By 1933, the Rangers were winning their second Stanley Cup, and the Americans had missed the playoffs in seven of their first eight years. In 1938, the Amherst, like everyone else, were having financial stresses due to the Great Depression. However, people in New York flocked to MSG that spring to see the Amherst and the Rangers face off in the first round of the playoffs. The clubs split the first two games in the best of three, and the rink was packed for the deciding game. It took six periods, but the Amherst won 3-2. Unfortunately, they were knocked out by Chicago in the second round. This was the closest the Amherst would ever get to the Stanley Cup. The next four years were all losing seasons for the New York Americans. Then in 1941, the New York Americans changed their name to the Brooklyn Americans. This was done because ownership believed most of their fan base was coming from Brooklyn. It was also a way to piggyback off the tremendous success of the baseball's Brooklyn Dodgers. With World War II in full swing in 1942, 90% of the Amherst roster were off fighting overseas. With that, ownership had no choice but to fold the team. It probably would not last much longer anyways. The Amherst had a poor record. They only recorded three winning seasons in 17 years. It seems like such a classic New York story, doesn't it? One New Yorker finds success, and then another New Yorker muscles in and takes over. I think the Amherst and the Rangers showed that you can have two successful teams playing in the same city, if it's New York City, of course. It would be a long time before that would happen again, as the New York Islanders would come along to move in on the Rangers' territory in 1972. There's quite the thread with this franchise. It started with the Quebec Bulldogs in 1917 when the NHL formed. They moved to Hamilton. Hamilton moved to New York City. And once the Brooklyn Americans folded in 1942, that was the end of that entire grouping there. 
Boy, it makes me feel good to know that you guys are enjoying these videos. Please continue to like and subscribe. I'm Kurt. This is Top Corner Hockey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.